today on Personal Injury Court. I don't usually get cases involving exploding turkey. Let's watch it here. I told her to put a can on the turkey. Of course it had to be an empty can. Isn't that common sense? I spent weeks in the burn unit at the hospital. This court has consulted a renowned plastic surgeon. Ms. Ford suffered deep partial thickness or second degree burns. My heart breaks yeah. hearing this story, but it's not our fault. You are suing for $650,000. Don't have anything to look forward to. Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Ford versus Robinson. Ms. Ford, it's my understanding from the documents that you filed with this court that you are suing your neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, for severe injuries you sustained when a turkey exploded while you were at their house. You're asking this court to award you $150,000 in medical expenses, $500,000 for pain and suffering, for a total award of $650,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, you believe this is not your fault because if Ms. Ford had followed explicit directions, she never would have been hurt. True? That's true, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, these folks are your neighbors. How would you get hurt with an exploding turkey? Your Honor, I've been neighbors with Bob and Bonnie for over 15 years. We're friends. We were friends. We would get together during the warm summer months and have cookouts, barbecues, potlucks. And I had never had fried turkey. I wanted to try it because everybody was talking about how great it was. And so I wanted to try it. And I bought the turkey and I bought all the ingredients and everything. And it was Bob's job to handle the frying part. Okay. Not mine. So, Mr. and Ms. Robinson, you all uh, were inviting people to your house. Oh, yes. This was going to be one of your potlucks. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, is this something you all did periodically? We did it quite often, yes. Yes, Your Honor. Anything like this ever happened before? It's never, never. happened before. Never. So what happened, Ms. Ford? Your Honor, Bob had the turkey ready to go, and the, and the oil was hot. It was piping hot. And he got a phone call. And he had his oven mitts on and everything, and he gave, he took off one of his oven mitts and he gave it to me and he said, put the turkey in the oil. I said, okay, sure. So he walked away. I put the turkey in the oil, but the oil didn't cover the turkey all the way. And I hollered out, hey, I need more oil. And he hollers back at me, put a can on top. I had, my, I had my apron on, and I had a can of beer in my pocket because I was getting ready to drink it, oh. and I put the, the can on top of the turkey. Like I you were did, told. Like, like, he, like he told me to do, Your okay. Honor. And I put the lid on top, and next thing I knew, the thing, the thing exploded in my face, and they got burns, they got burns yes, all over my body. Yes, ma'am. I spent weeks in the burn unit at the just breathe. It's going to be okay. Just breathe. <laughs> now, you said that... I want to know how this happened from your perspective. Now, you submitted an exhibit to this court. I want you to cross over to the plasma screen and take me through this. This is how you fry a turkey, right? Yes, Your Honor. Show me what we're doing. Okay. In my first graphic, this is what I assume she was talking about. Here's a turkey that's not submerged. I told her to put a can on the turkey, of course it had to be an empty can. And I feel bad for everything she went through, but it's her fault, Your Honor. Can I demonstrate? Yes, sir, you may. An empty can on the turkey. You place the lid on the can and you press it down until the turkey is submerged. That's all she had to do. But instead, she used a full can and of course it exploded. Now, I don't usually get cases involving exploding turkeys. <laughs> so I did a little research and came up with a video that shows me how dangerous this can be. Let's watch it here.
So obviously we're not flipping hot dogs in, in the same kind of way. Frying a turkey can be very dangerous, right? Your Honor, this was her idea to fry the turkey. We so were, she wanted the fried turkey. She wanted the fried turkey. We agreed to ha host the party at our house and yes, to provide the fryer. That was it. She even sent us an online instructions on how to fry a turkey. Well, let's take a look at it. Okay. How to fry a turkey, number one, thaw and dry the turkey. Number two, do not stuff. Number three, set fryer in a safe spot. Number four, never fry inside. All this sounds like common sense stuff. Number five, use the right type and amount of oil. Number six, submerge bird in oil. Number seven, don't leave fryer unattended. Number eight, cook turkey three to five minutes per pound and then you got a nice turkey, right? Yes, sir, Your Honor, it doesn't say anything about the can. Now, did you tell Miss Ford Put an empty can on top of the turkey. Your Honor, I assumed she would know to put an empty can on the turkey. Ah, ah. Isn't that common sense? Your Honor, with all due respect to my good friend, he didn't say put an empty can. He said put a can on top. I'm not a cook. I don't have a background in cooking. That's not what I do. I followed his instructions. I did what he told me to do. I did what he told me to do. Coming up. We need fresh, healthy tissue to receive the graft. We choose a donor site, take our skin, place it into the wound bed that's been prepared. My whole life has changed. Couldn't you have said to her, make sure the can is empty. We thought she could fry a turkey without blowing it up. This court has consulted Food Network personality and celebrity chef for Gay Fraser. in the oil, I put the lid on top, and next thing I knew, the thing, the thing exploded in my face. Miss Ford, tell me about your injuries. I can see that your face has been burned. Yes. And that your arm has been burned. Yes. L let me know the complete list of your injuries. I got second degree burns all over my body. 22% of my body is burned. All I can do is go back and forth to the hospital and have skin grafts, and I don't know how long that's gonna take. The skin grafts, I'm not looking forward to. My whole life has changed. Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, you see, this is a tragic result to your next door neighbor. Your Honor, I, I have every bit of sympathy for what Ms. Ford went through. And my heart Ms. breaks Ford. hearing this story, but it's not our fault, Your Honor. Couldn't you have said to her, make sure the can is empty? In retrospect, yes, Your Honor. But I thought, I mean, we she's, a, she she's a teacher. She teaches at a college. This she's is a, common sense to you. It's to common me, sense, that's exactly what it is. And she said she did is. the research. She said she knew how to do it. That, yeah. We thought she could fry a turkey without blowing it up. You're asking this court for $150,000 for medical expenses. Yes, sir. These are very severe injuries. Yes. And to further understand these injuries, this court has consulted a renowned plastic surgeon, Dr. Carmen Cavalli. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Cavalli and bring her in? Yes, Your Honor. Good day, Dr. Cavalli. Good day. Can you explain the plaintiff's injuries? Ms. Ford suffered deep partial thickness or second degree burns over nearly one fifth of her total body surface area. This is a very serious injury. It involves the superficial layer of the skin and part of the deep layer of the skin. Dr. Cavalli, what's the difference between a first degree burn and a second degree burn? A first degree burn is basically a sunburn. It's red skin that does not blister and heals typically within 24 hours. While a second degree burn is a deeper but still partial thickness burn. It involves the visible layer of the skin and part of the dermis, which is the deeper layer of the skin. Next. What's the biggest mistake that people make? Water and oil do not mix. It's gonna set your house on fire. You still say this is not your fault? She's the one that really wanted a fried turkey. Had he not gotten a call, he would have been the man. Had you used an empty can, y'all would have just had fried turkey. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear and I'm ready to render my decision.
an empty can on the turkey. You place the lid on the can and you press it down until the turkey is submerged. He didn't say put an empty can. This is a very serious injury. How do you repair a second degree burn? Some parts of the second degree burn might heal on their own with good wound care. Others might require skin grafting. And what's the process of a skin graft? I brought a video to help with that if you'd like. Yes, ma'am. So this is a, a burn wound bed. It looks a little old and dirty, so we're gonna clean it up first with irrigation and debridement because we need fresh, healthy tissue to receive the graft. We choose a donor site, in this case, the thigh, take our skin, place it into the wound bed that's been prepared, uh, uh, apply sutures to hold it in place, and then a nice occlusive dressing to keep a moist barrier while the healing occurs. Once that heals, does it ever look normal? In the case of Mrs. Ford, who has 22% partial thickness burns, um, she will most likely need split thickness skin grafts, which can heal with a cobblestone appearance. Doctor, thank you so much. You are released. We appreciate it. Thank you, Judge. It. Ms. Ford, I can see that Dr. Cavalli's testimony has made you very emotional. That's not lost on this court. What's going through your mind right now? I just, just the idea of having, having to live like this is not, I don't, I don't have anything to look forward to. It's just, I just. Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, you can see from the testimony of Dr. Cavalli, these are very, very serious and permanent injuries. This is bad. But you still say this is not your fault? Well, Your Honor, she was the one that had this idea. And she did the research. This is on her. She did I the did. research. I, she, Ms. Ford, did you send them this the recipe? Court. I sent I sent them the recipe. But I didn't read the recipe because I knew I wasn't going to be the one frying the turkey. Folks, to further understand the proper way to fry a turkey, this court has consulted Food Network personality and celebrity chef Tregay Fraser. Sheriff Matt, will you get <laughs> Chef Fraser in? Okay. Chef, what's the biggest mistake that people make when they're trying to fry a turkey? Look, Your Honor, you need to make sure that the turkey is 100% thawed out, like through and through. And actually, I have a video to show you guys what happens when you put a frozen turkey into the turkey fryer. Let's take a look at it. Look. Explosion. Explosion. It's going to set your house on fire. That's it's... from a frozen turkey and grease? Yes. Tur water and oil do not mix. They do not mix. Like, that's the worst ever. Like, you don't want to have water, any ice in your turkey. What's the craze about fried turkey? Oh, my goodness. First of all, fried turkey is amazing. It's the juiciest turkey you'll ever want to have. Thank you, Chef. We thank appreciate you. you. You're released. All right, thank you. Did y'all know that she had never fried a turkey before? I, I was unaware of unaware. it. But I assumed that she wanted to but she had learn just from she, me. I mean, she knew. She did it. She knew I did she it many, many it. times before. And, and Your Honor, if I may, it didn't, it doesn't say anything about a can on, on that recipe. It doesn't say put, to put a can on top to push it down in the oil. It doesn't, there's nothing like that on, on that recipe that I sent. Mr. Robinson, are you a cook? I mean, wouldn't you know about this? I would know about it, Your Honor. And my assumption was that she wanted to be part of the frying experience. She's the one, like, like we said, She's the one that really wanted a fried turkey for this event. If Bob had not gotten that phone call, he would have been the one to immerse that turkey in that oil, and I would still have been standing there. He got called away to take a phone call, and that's why I, by default, was the one who put the turkey in the fryer. Had, I, had he not gotten a call, he would have been the man. 
Is that would that be would that be accurate? But had you used an empty can, y'all would have just had fried turkey. <laughs> Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear and I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. He says, put a can on the turkey, you put the lid down, this thing explodes. You believe it is common sense for anybody to know that you don't put a liquid-filled can in hot grease. The law requires me to base my decision on the evidence He didn't say, put an empty can. We thought she could fry a turkey without blowing it up. I did what he told me to do. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear and I'm ready to render my decision. The plaintiff has the burden in every personal injury case to prove three things. Ms. Ford, you've got to prove that the Robinsons were wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing you have to prove is that their wrong caused the third thing, your injuries. Here you've put up this evidence that you got the turkey, you got the instructions, you expected that Mr. Robinson was gonna show you how to do this. You go there to watch him fry the turkey. When he steps away to attend to a call, he says, put a can on the turkey, and you put a can on the turkey because you got a can of beer in your pocket. You put the lid down, this thing explodes, and changes your appearance and how you feel about yourself, how you feel and your whole life forever. Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, I have heard you in this trial. You believe it is common sense for anybody to know that you don't put a liquid-filled can in hot grease. Well, the evidence makes this case kind of a traditional landowner liability, premises liability case. What the law says is that you all, as the landowners, the homeowners, you have a responsibility to take reasonable measures to keep your guests safe. Now, part of those reasonable measures are when you have a cookout, if you have something that's going to be as dangerous as cooking a turkey or hot grease, you give instruction if someone else is going to do it. When you said, put a can on it to a novice turkey fryer, you must say, Put an empty can because it will explode. <laughs> Ms. Ford, I find that you have proven that the Robinsons are wrong. Thank You're you. You are good people, but the law requires me to base my decision on the evidence. Ms. Ford has proven that your wrong failure to instruct her caused her injuries. I must find in your favor, and I'm going to award you $150,000 for your medical expenses and $500,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $650,000 in the plaintiff's favor and against the defendants. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. on Personal Injury Court. The second the spoon hit my tongue, my eyes started tearing up, they started swelling, my skin started itching, my throat started constricting. Just like my, that. Just, just like, like that, that, instantly. That's what your face looked like that day? Yes, Your Honor. She's hysterical, and she's telling me that I tried to kill her. You are suing your coworker for $60,000. Is it fair to describe this as a life or death situation? This is absolutely a life or death situation. Can you is, smell the peanuts? That's such Are a you subjective. Are telling me because you're allergic? Why? You don't know this the smell so of peanuts? This is so serious. You're going to literally... We're going to have order in this court. Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Darling versus French. Ms. Darling, it's my understanding from the documents you filed with this court that you are suing a co-worker for injuries that you believe she caused while you were at work. 
You're asking this court to award you $15,000 for past medical expenses and $45,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $60,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. French, you believe this is not your fault. If she had acted properly and safely, she would not have been harmed. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Y'all work together, right? Yes, Your Honor. I've been working here for three years. We work at a nut-free factory. We make nut-free vegetable-based cookies and crackers. I actually have allergies myself. They've gotten worse as I've gotten older. Um, and so this is the perfect job for me. And this is where we met and we became friends. So it's got to be weird, Ms. French, that you are getting sued by a former friend and coworker. Your Honor, I've been working in the company for a year and a half. I was really surprised that we uh, became friends because we had so much in common. We like the same uh, movies, we like the same music, we talk a lot about food. And I wasn't looking for a, a not free environment, but I myself have some allergies, so I understand what she's going through. And uh, to be honest, Your Honor, I'm really concerned because we're still working together. So a lawsuit, what is going to happen now? Well, lawsuits never make relationships better, but we're going to figure this out today. Now, Ms. Darling, tell me what happened. Well, Your Honor, we have lunch from 12 to 1 o'clock. That is the only break we have during our very hectic day. All for right. Food, anything. And I was starving. I had not been able to eat breakfast earlier that day. And Carla and I usually eat together for lunch every day. And I actually had let her borrow $15 the week before, and so she said she was bringing us lunch. So lunchtime hits, and I am starving. I'm walking around trying to find her, and I can't find her. I don't know where she is. I can't wait anymore, Your Honor. I go to the refrigerator, I open it up, and there's two containers say, do not touch with our names on it. So I grab the one with my name on it. I didn't think twice. I go back to my desk, and Your Honor, the second the spoon hit my tongue, everything changed. My eyes started tearing up. They started swelling. My skin started itching. My lips started tingling. My throat started constricting. Just like, like that. Just, just like, like that. that, instantly. Like, it went bad real fast. It was, a I've never been through anything like that. And oh. it was the scariest thing I've, I've ever been through. It was, I literally knew that this was life or death. That's what your face looked like that day? Yes, Your Honor. And that's not even the same woman. I, I was in such a frenzy. I was in such a panic. Some small part of me remembered that I had my auto injectable device somewhere in my desk. So I can barely see, I can barely breathe. And I'm trying, you know, to, to panic. I, I'm, I'm trying to find it. In my frenzy, I literally hit my head so hard. So that's how that, you got that bruise on your head. Yes, Your Honor. But the grace of God, I found the auto injectable device. I stabbed myself in the thigh, and I was able to breathe again <laughs> within a couple of minutes. Um, and one of my coworkers called 911. So all of this is from an allergy, right? Yes, Your Honor. What are you allergic to? Peanuts. Oh. I've got a really good friend that has a peanut allergy. He's always nervous when we get on airplanes if it's uh, one of those airlines that serves peanuts. For good reason. For him, it's a life and death kind of situation. Is that the way it was for you? Absolutely. I came to, and I'm in the ER, um, and I had such a severe reaction that they actually required me to stay overnight. This wasn't a... So was you passed out and then wake up in the ER. Miss French, what did you make that had peanuts in it? Okay, Your Honor, the night before, I was cooking some chili uh, because she lent me some money last week, so I wanted to make something nice for her. So this recipe is my grandma's recipe, and it has been in the family for generations. Okay. So I was cooking the chili last night, and I separated some batch for her. So. There were two containers, right? Right. And I put the names on the lids. So after I put the lids on it, I realized that the name were wrong. Oh. So what I did is I just taped the containers and I sealed them really tight. And I put do not touch on the containers because you, I know- But you said allergic. you separated it. Why are you separating it? Your Honor, the secret ingredient that my grandma has for this specific recipe is peanut butter. In chili? Oh. Yes, Your Honor, and it tastes really good. And we were supposed to have lunch together, but I was called to a meeting at 12. My okay. boss called me. So I went to the meeting, 
And 15 minutes later, um, I came out of the meeting, I went to the fridge, and I realized that she took the wrong container, even though they were taped. You had to be panicked. Exactly, I panicked, so I went to my desk and I asked what happened to Tanya, and then somebody told me that she was rushed to the hospital. So I was really concerned about her. So I called her, and she's hysterical, and she's telling me that I tried to kill her. This is serious accusation. I mean, tried to kill her? Would that, you not but, be hysterical? But you knew she had a peanut allergy, right? Coming up. So you saw your name on top. And that's why you thought it was yours. Yes. But you did see Do Not Touch, right? I thought that was for everyone else. This court has consulted an internal medicine physician. So food allergies can range from mild to severe. It could be hives, so the welts across the arms, or it can be swelling and redness in a particular part of the face. Severe allergies can progress to anaphylaxis. I would like a little bit of that chili. Of course, Your Honor. There's two containers, so I grabbed the one with my name on it. The second the spoon hit my tongue, the lips started tingling, my throat started constricting. Just like, like that. Just, just like, like that. that. This was life or death. I realized that the name were wrong, so I just taped the containers and I put do not touch. So it's taped, right? Your Honor, I asked her if it had. And there's a butter. sign on it, right? That says do yes. not touch. Your Honor, I brought the chili, the containers. This is how it looks. You see, they were taped. It's tape on it, and it says, do not touch. So if it looks like that, don't you I wait? I asked her if there was peanut butter in it. She said no. She lied to my face. And the sign, do not touch, I thought it was for everyone else. We had already agreed we were eating together, and these were two containers together, me and her. And it had my name on it. It Sheriff, says, do not get touch. The for me. She should have waited for me. It's taped, Your Honor. You see, it's completely taped. It's sealed tight. So is this how you found it? Yes, Your Honor. And this is how you taped it, Miss Frank? Yes, Your Honor. So it's taped around here. All right, they kind of let you know that it's... somebody's trying to keep these together. It... My first... So you saw your name on top, yes, right? Yes, Your Honor. And that's why you thought it was yours. Yes. But you did see Do Not Touch, I right? I thought that was for everyone else. That was honestly my instant inclination. We had already talked that we were eating. I mean, why would you bring anything with peanuts? Well, I don't have any peanut allergies. My only allergy is not getting enough food, okay? <laughs> but uh, you knew she had an allergy, right? Yes, I knew. And Your Honor, I brought some chili here to show you the difference. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Your Honor, this is the chili without peanut butter. And you can see it's really thin. Uh -huh. See? It looks like more of something I would exactly. make. Exactly. And even the color is different. Yes, ma'am. Now, this one is thicker, Your Honor. Look now, at this. Now, this is your grandmother's recipe. This is my grandma's recipe. I have something if you want to try. Actually, from here, you can smell the peanut butter. I mean, you can smell it has peanuts. So when she heated it up, she could have smelled the peanuts. She because could have smelled the here. peanuts. Sniff everything? I have an allergy. Well, isn't that the point? And no, everyone I mean, don't you pay attention to your nose? Exactly. Can that you is, smell the peanuts? That's such Are a you subjective telling me that because you're allergic? Quality. You don't know this the smell so of peanuts? This is so serious. You're going to literally... We're going to have order in this court. Y'all can't talk to each other. Talk to me. Miss French, uh, if you've got a bowl or something over there, I, I would like a little bit of that chili. <laughs> of course, Your Honor. For, uh... Next. So what you I, did I was break this tape I, off, right? Yes, Your Honor. Well, you had to overcome tape. Didn't this say something to you? Sheriff, will you get Dr. Casaboy in here? Yes, Your Honor. Anaphylaxis, the symptoms include difficulty breathing to cardiac arrest and death. Miss French, you know you created a life or death situation with this peanut butter in the chili. Do you see that? started tearing up, they started swelling, my skin started itching. The secret ingredient that my grandma has for this specific recipe is peanut butter. But you knew she had a peanut allergy, right? I would like a little bit of that chili. 
of Carter on our And because I've already eaten lunch, Sheriff Matt's gonna taste it for you. <laughs> So smell it first, Sheriff. Does it smell like peanuts? Yeah, it smells like peanut butter. It's pretty strong, actually. And you didn't smell peanuts? When I you don't go this? around sniffing things. I, I have an allergy. I honestly, you would think. <laughs> would you get a spoon close to your mouth and you don't smell peanuts. Talk to me. You, you did say you were hungry, but I mean, you were cannibal hungry not to smell that, right? <laughs> I was so hungry, I saw my name. I didn't even once think there's peanut butter in there. In order to understand your allergies from a medical perspective, this court has consulted an internal medicine physician, Dr. Arafa Casaboy. Sheriff, will you get Dr. Casaboy in here? Yes, Your Honor. Good day, doctor. Hello. How do you develop food allergies? So the classic food allergies develop when the body's defense system has an abnormal response to a food. So in the case of peanuts, the allergic autoantibody of the immune system attacks a protein in the food, and that sets off a cascade of chemical reactions that result in the symptoms of the allergy. And this can happen very fast, within minutes to a few hours. Doctor, how do food allergies affect different people in different ways? So food allergies can range from mild to severe. The mild symptoms, you may get a rash. So it could be hives, so the welts across the arms in this picture, or it could be swelling and redness in a particular part of the face, just like this gentleman with the lips. And then you can also get symptoms that are similar to seasonal allergies. So the runny nose with sneezing, itchy, watery eyes. With severe allergies, you can progress to anaphylaxis. Now, with anaphylaxis, the symptoms include uh, difficulty breathing or wheezing. It may be that the person feels that they're getting nauseous and vomiting. They may have throat, tongue swelling, and um, not be able to pass air because of that. Again, the skin reactions can occur. And this can progress to cardiac arrest and death. Dr. Miss Darling, had pictures as well as she talked about her face and lips swelling. How long does that swelling last? Well, that will depend on how quickly she gets treatment. Is it fair recovery. to describe this as a life or death situation? This is absolutely a life or death situation. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate you. You're Thank really you. Miss French, you know you created a life or death situation with this peanut butter in the chili. Do you see that? Yes, but uh, your honor, I mean, she took the wrong uh, container. She should have waited for me. I was in a meeting. We were supposed to have lunch together, like we do several times. So why she couldn't wait? It was just 15 minutes. Well, she you... took the wrong container. And it's labeled. It said, do not touch. Your honor, we only she get an it. hour for so, lunch. So what you I, did I just... was break this tape <laughs> off, right? And, and get the one that was that had your name on it, right? Yes, Your Honor. Well, you had to overcome tape. Didn't this say something to you? I thought they were grouped for her and I. The do not touch sign was for everyone else. That is what I assumed. Couldn't you have waited? I never though? once thought there would be, pe why would you bring peanut butter? <laughs> your friend has a peanut butter allergy. Why even risk it? And no, I couldn't wait for it. I, we, <sighs> I was too hungry. We work at a nut-free factory. Some folks say haste makes waste, but haste makes harm. <laughs> folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. In this case, you've put up evidence that Miss French knew about your allergy to peanuts. She prepared this meal for you. Put your name on it. You took one taste of this chili and you knew you were in trouble. Miss French, you went through the extra precaution for taping these containers and trying to protect her. And you believe her injuries are her problem. There's two containers say do not touch with our names on it. So I grabbed the one with my name on it. The second the spoon hit my tongue, I literally knew that 
this was life or death. She's hysterical, and she's telling me that I tried to kill her. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove that the defendant was wrong, that the defendant's wrong caused your injuries. You've proven your injuries. In this case, you've put up evidence that Ms. French knew about your allergy to peanuts. She also knew that you were kind of a hungry, hungry person when lunchtime came around, and that you love to eat, and you like to eat her food. <laughs> she prepared this meal for you, put your name on it, put it in the fridge. It did have the tape on it and the do not touch, but you thought that was for everybody else. You took one taste of this chili, and you knew you were in trouble. Within moments, you had to use your pen, and you found yourself in the emergency room. A very, very, very scary situation. Ms. French, this boggles your mind based on how you have handled yourself in this courtroom. You seem like you don't understand why she didn't just wait. You went through the extra precaution, and you should get kudos for that, for taping these containers and trying to protect her. You went and put a sign on and said, do not touch. And she disregarded that to her own peril. And you believe her injuries are her problem, her responsibility. You should not be held responsible. Well, the legal principle that applies to this case is very simple. Where there is risk, everyone must act reasonably to address the risk and lessen the likelihood of harm. Both of you have that responsibility. Where this case gets skewed is where you create the risk and a real risk. It's a risk of life and death. When you brought this peanut chili into the workplace for her to eat and you put her name on the wrong one, you created a deadly risk. And the law holds you responsible for that to act even at a higher level to make sure that she is safe. You did not do so. You have proven that Ms. French is wrong and that her wrong caused your injuries. And that's why I'm going to find in your favor and award you $15,000 for past medicals and $45,000 for your pain and suffering for a total award of $60,000 against the defendant. That's my final award, and this matter is adjourned.